morning. I'm Pastor Sam, and I'm uh, been, I'm with uh, St. Petersburg Dream Center ministry that God has given me for over 15 years. It's definitely something that I didn't want. But if you ever do, are you doing something that you didn't want, but yet God gave it to you, and you're doing it and being faithful with it? Well, that's what God gave me. Praise the Lord. I really enjoy it. And uh, I just want to pray before we start. Uh, the ministry that he gave me, uh, how, I just want to let you know, we have a men's group that meets every Friday at 6.30 at the uh, Egg Platter. And we've been meeting there for, uh, we're going on five years, uh, no, no, uh, uh, about a year now. Prior to that, we were meeting in another place. So totally, we've been meeting together for over 10 years. Every Friday. Rain, sleet, or snow. Yeah. You know, her, or in our case, hurricanes or whatever. Yeah. Where there's always a man standing at the post. And we haven't missed a lick. And I just want to thank God for that. And uh, I just want to let you know the, how, I, uh, how the Lord uh, uh, spoke to me about doing this on sexual addiction. We had, in, our, in our group that we meet, we, do a, we take a, a book and we pass it around. Every, if I give it to you, well, you're, uh, if, if it's chapter two, well, then you go home, you study it on chapter two, and you come back and give us a summary. And I'm the one that started that, right? So I, I uh, passed it around. Guess what? I got the one on sexual purity. It's not the one that I, I said, what am I going to do with this? What do, I know, what, do I, what do I know about that? But as I did the studying and everything on it, it really opened up my eyes and God spoke to me because my heart has always been small groups. I enjoy small groups. I've been facilitating small groups ever since Promise Keepers. And uh, I don't know how, how many of you all have ever been in a Promise, Speak, uh, Promise Keepers conference. Well, that transformed my life. Prior to that, I, it was okay. I just got saved. But when I went to a Promise Keepers group, and fill, uh, there were 50,000 men, it was one of the most powerful things that I've ever imagined. And since that time, I have been involved in small groups. And so I just want to pray before we start. I'll give you a little uh, history of how I got involved with this. Again, I'll share that a little bit uh, when I was doing a, a, a our men's group that we meet every uh, every fr every Friday at 6:30 at, at Egg Platter, and uh, I pass out a book, and the book everybody you know again does a, a chapter, and the chapter that gave me again, as I just said a, a little while ago, that I had to teach on that day was on sexual purity. Now, that's the last thing I ever want to talk about. I mean, that's the last thing I want to talk about, sex or any of that stuff, you know? That, that's not what, that, you know, no, no, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. But once I, uh, I, I studied it, and then I taught it. And so God placed it in my heart, the importance of us to be able to deal with a, a, an issue that is going on in the body of Christ today. It's one of those, like Lee, Lee says, See, nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to uh, you know, speak it out inside the church because somebody might get offended. But the reality is, and those stats that you saw there were, uh, were it's crazy. The, uh, the issues that are going on in the church today, and it's not just a man's issue, it's also a woman's issue that they're dealing with this. But unless we deal with it, unless we talk about it, and bring it out, how in the world are we ever going to get healed? How in the world are we ever going to be able to deal with this issue that we have? That, you know, that has been uh, one of those, no, uh, no, we can't talk about that in church because people won't get offended. People don't want to talk about that in church because the tithe is going to go down. What are you doing? But the reality is that we need to bring this problem up to the forefront so that we could get healed. I'm not a very good computer guy. 
But I got, I, when I got into ministry, I uh, got a laptop, and I started working on the laptop. I started to learn, do all my studies. Everything is on my laptop, brother. If I lose that, well, I'm going to have to start again because I'm not done. But I'm telling you, I got so much stuff on there. But that you know that on that laptop, if you guys are, uh, uh, you know, work your laptop on over here, you get all these little things all the time. You know, call me. Are these, are these girls or, or, or on there? So, you know, you don't, you don't pay attention to it. But then one minute you go and you click on that and boom, it opens up. And you know that men are geared with sight. David, instead of being at war where he should have been, he took time off. And what did he do? Well, he was on his porch one day. And what did he do? He looked. I mean, is there a problem with looking? Come on, let's be real. No. But is there a, t- is there a problem with just keep on looking and gazing? See, that's where the sin came in. Because sometimes you may see something, and it's beautiful, praise God. But if you keep on looking at it and looking at it, then you start to lust after that, that thing that you're uh, looking at. You know, I, I, I mean, I lust on some cars. With the, wheel, uh, with the wheels, and you look at that, I want to have that car. And then what do you do? You keep thinking about it, and eventually you're going to do something stupid, and you go buy that car and put it on time. But see, what we're dealing in here is not just it's addictions on sexual addiction, but it's not just sexual addiction. But it is something that is so important that unless we deal with it, we're not, uh, we're not going to be set free. The God said he's coming for a holy and a perfect church. A cleansed church, sanctified church. But if we're walking around with all these issues in our hearts, then we're not able to be set free. I want to just share this. What really moved me into doing this and starting this, because what we're going to do off of this is going to start a small group. And it's, a five, it's going to be a five-week process that we're going to come together right here and we're going to have uh, breakfast made. And this, this is free. It's going to be a breakfast here. On fr- uh, and, and then for the next five weeks, we're going to uh, watch this video, which is awesome that you watch. But I'll tell you what, there ain't nothing. You haven't seen nothing yet. But I'm going to tell you what really motivated me. This is a letter that I found on the Internet. The letter says, Dear Dad, I want to let you know, first of all, that I love you and forgive you for what this has done in my life. I also want to let you know exactly what your porn has done to my life. You may think that this affects only you or even even yours or mom's relationship, but it has had a profound impact on on me and all of my siblings as well. I found your porn on the computer somewhere around the age of 12 or so, just when I was starting to become a young woman. First of all, it seemed very hypocritical to me that you were trying to teach me the value of what to let into into my mind in terms of movies. Yet, here you you were entertaining your mind with this junk on a regular basis. Your talk to me, you talk to me about being careful with what I watch meant virtually nothing. Because of the pornography, I was aware that mom was not the only woman you were looking at. I became actually aware of your wandering eyes, and when we were out and about, this taught me that all men have a wandering eye and can't be trusted. I learned to distrust and even dislike men for the way they perceive women in this way. As far as modesty goes, you try to talk with me about how my dress affects those around me and how I should value myself for what I am on the inside. Your actions, however, told me that I would only ever truly be beautiful and acceptable if I looked like the woman a magazine cover or in porn. Your talk with me meant nothing. In fact, just made me angry. As I grew older, I only had this message reinforced by the culture we live in. 
that beauty is something that can only be achieved if you love like if you look like them. I also learned to trust you less and less as what you told me didn't line up with what you did. I wonder more and more if I wonder if I would ever find a man who would accept me and love me for me and not just a pretty face. When I have friends over, I wonder how you perceive them. Did you see them as my friends or did you see them as a pretty face in one of your fa uh, fantasies? No girl should ever want to wonder that about that man who is supposed to be protecting her and other women in her life. When I read that, when I read that, I have a daughter. And I just wondered if my daughter ever broke in or saw something that I might have looked at. How would that, how did that affect her? How would that have affect her? And so when I read this, this is when the, uh, the Lord opened the door for me to come uh, to this series, to be able to do this series. Because, see, I do believe that we all need this. See, I believe that men have been put in a, in, in a position that, it, uh, that you know, I'm, I'm macho and I don't have any issues, but there are certain things that we just don't talk about. And then in the church, they don't encourage us to talk about those things. But that's why it's important for us to be able to have a, a group of men coming together uh, uh, just to deal with these issues. My, so we're proposing of having a small uh, well, group here and for five weeks, and we're going to have breakfast and all that. If that stimulates y'all coming over here, <laughs> or if you're wanting to, that's, that's good. But the issue is, the important thing is that every one of us ha has one problem or another. If it's not sexual addiction, you know, uh, if, it, uh, if it's not porn, if it's not masturbation, if, if, it's, if, if it's not, uh, you know, drinking alcohol, lying or what, there's an issue that we all may have. And a lot of it may stem from when we were kids. But unless we sit down and we talk about these issues, we're all going to walk around and think that we're all fixed. We're fixed in the outside, but are we healed in the inside? And, and, and this is what we're wanting to be about. I mean, just to think about uh, the, the stats uh, that uh, what pornography or sexual addiction is happening in, in America today. I'm just going to read about the stats that is going on in the church, the impact on the church. The 53% of uh, promise keepers, how many of you went to promise keepers again? A whole bunch of us went, didn't we? Praise God. Uh, <coughs> 23% uh, of promise keepers of men admitted viewing pornography in the past week. According to pastor, the top sexual issue damaging to their congregations are 50 per, uh, one, 50% 50 uh, pornography addiction, 34 sexual active, never married adults, 30% adultery or married adults, 28 sexual, uh, sexually active teenagers, 16 sexually dissatisfaction. Impact on the church, five out of every 10 men in the congregation are struggling with some issue concerning pornography. 34% of church-going women said they have intentionally visited porn websites alone. 54% of pastors admit to viewing internet porn in the last year, and 30% admit viewing, viewing within the past month. 50% of all the Christian men are addicted to pornography. Now, these are some crazy numbers. I don't know how they come across with all those stats and all that, but what that is showing me that there's an issue that's going on in the, within the body. We need to talk about these things. We need to uh, 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 deal with these issues. And the only way that we're going to be healed from any of these things is where we come together as brothers, as men of God and share our hearts, you know? How many of y'all been divorced? Amen. I've been divorced. I've been married now 37 years. Praise God. But just recently, I found out something about my wife. I found that we went to St. Augustine 
uh, for a little vacation. And there's a group of people that are call, uh, was, uh, I was talking about earlier that are called the nuns. And these people are people that don't want to go to church anymore. They're done with church. They're done with the hypocrisy. They're done with the lies. They're done because they're not really getting their, their needs met. They go, they hear a good uh, song or music, they get a good word, they get a little goosebump, and then they say what they do the rest of the week because they're dealing with issues with the inside of them. So anyway, my wife said, you know what? If I, she don't go to church again, it wouldn't bother her at all. And my wife has uh, been working for over 15 years, about 20 years at a local church. She's seen so much stuff happening in that church that, I, you know, I mean, she, she knows where all the bodies are buried, every one of them. And, and if a person that has not been having a relationship in church, you start working in the church, you probably want to run from the church because of things that just go on that are not right. But, you know, I found that out about her. But another thing I found out is me. See, I'm addicted. I'm a workaholic. When I get involved in something, I'm there. Uh, you know, I, I, when I had my business, I was there, uh, you know, 24-7. And I worked, made money, and that was my God. That was my church. That's where I got my, uh, my worth because I was Sam, the businessman. And so we're always looking for our worth in something else than instead of the worth in what God thinks of us. So but when my, when my wife uh, told me that, and she told me how I have abandoned her and my daughter, wow, by being so involved in ministry, doing outreaches and outreaches, I'm at the, at, the, at the church, at the center, I've been doing all of this and not spending time with my wife. So how does that, how that affect? So I'm very fortunate we got 37 years, praise God. And we're still together. And, you know, and I, but see, I belong to the school, you know, like, duh, you know. When should I, I've, I've heard enough messages about that. But unless I sat down with my wife and actually talked to her, found out what's going on, I wouldn't know. But see, man, we need to come together. Some, most of us here have been, uh, been ma uh, married and divorced uh, at least once. And so what is it? they went on what's going on what's going on in our life because we can't always blame her we got to look inside what did i do what did i do how has porn addiction or sexual addiction ruined your your marriage you know when we when we married our um, we got married we were young you know but maybe uh maybe your wife put on another 50 pounds or or maybe even 100 pounds. You know, maybe she don't look what she, like she used to look at. But yet, what do we do then? We start fantasizing and flipping on through the, uh, uh, through the Internet and, and on TV. You know, I, I tell you what, I don't like a, a Victoria's Secret commercial. To me, that's por uh, soft porn. That's what that is. And some of the TV that we, uh, programs that we watch, you know, like... Uh, Chicago police, the Chicago fire, and all that stuff, you know? Man, those guys are in a, in a sack half the, half the program. My goodness, you know? They're working in a business in what a, or in an office, and, and they're having sex in the, uh, in the rooms in there. What's going on? But see, this is the things that we're seeing and we're hearing all the time. And, and, and after a while, man, you, you, know, you, you, you get worn out it's there. You know, hey, you know? So we have to be so careful. We have to guard our, our, our hearts. We have to guard our eyes. But you know what? Unless we come together in small groups, God, the word says, you know, when two walk together, if one falls, the other could be picked up. So we need them, brothers. We need one another to share their hearts. Well, you know, Greg, the other day we had so, uh, I had a great time with you after, after the uh, Band of Brothers. Because we talk more than we ever talked. I know a little bit more about you than, 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 than I ever had. But see, unless I know some of those things, you know, I might think that Greg is a jerk. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, but unless we know these things, that, you know, what has actually transpired in his life 
and what happened in this life, then we are not, now we understand him more, or I understand him more, and I look forward to having a stronger relationship uh, with him because now I know a little bit of stuff that he's gone through. See, I don't know what you've gone through or any of you guys gone through. And you might be going through stuff right now. You might be dealing with issues right now at home. You know, there might be a, uh, the marriage is under rock. It might be a financial issue. It might be uh, all sorts of things. But unless we come together and men and sit around the table and we talk and share our hearts. What I've been doing with small groups, uh, like I said, for 15, 20 years. And we, uh, we used to be at the St. Pete Diner. And we used to meet there. Sometimes we would have uh, uh, anywhere between 10, 15 to 30 men at 6 o'clock in the morning. 6 o'clock in the morning. Any of you ever been to one of those? Do you ever went to one of them? Well, we were there at 6 o'clock in the morning. And, but I'm going to tell you what. I've had men come in there. One man came in there one day, and he was going to commit suicide. We never met the man before. But he came, we heard, we listened, and we prayed with him. Well, he didn't commit suicide that day. And he got his life uh, 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 back together with the Lord. Man, I see, I don't know what you're going through right now, any of y'all. But I, I, I went through hell the last three years, three or four years in ministry. I had a, my ministry in the South Side. I've had, um, uh, I tell people, you want a knife? Take the one out of my back. <coughs> I've had more people lie uh, and say things and do this and that, whatever, that I was just so broken. But just this year, at the end of the year, man, I feel, I feel like uh, so free. I could run around. I feel that spirit that just came off of me. That, that, that I'm able to do this now because uh, four months ago, six months ago, I wouldn't be able to do this. But I'm open now because God has set me free. God has healed me from those broken uh, hurts, those broken promises, and these things. But unless we deal with these issues as men, then we're going to walk around. And I don't know, you guys have been through those Promise Keepers meetings, and I know you guys have seen uh, those kids. I wish I had a backpack right now. And I wish I had a whole bunch of bricks because I'll have him start walking around with the backpack and uh, uh, CJ would keep putting those bricks in there. And because what happens, those are the burdens and those are the struggles and those are the issues that we're all going through. And you, but then it gets to a point where you're walking around like this that you're not able to deal with those issues. And what happens? We, I, we just heard of a, a brother that recently just took his life. Was it that bad that he didn't have someone to talk to and sit down? God wants to heal us. God wants to heal this church. And this is why we're going to be doing this program. Matter of fact, there was a, 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 a notebook going around Please, everybody put your name, phone number, address. Did everybody get, uh, get there? Because what I want to do, I want to call you personally and let you know if you want to be a part of it, fine. And if you can't make them all, it's okay. But if you could come and, and, and if you like it, maybe uh, you might want to do it in your church. You know, after we go through the program uh, and everything that we've done here, at the end, I believe in deliverance. How do you all believe in deliverance? You believe that we need to pray for those issues, those broken uh, 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 things in our life? Well, you know, at the end, once we have put, uh, put it down, uh, uh, put it all out, then we're going to deal with that. Because then God, and you guys are going to start walking around like, be like the Ali, uh, st was that, sting like a, how does he say it? Fly like a bottle, sting like a bee. You're going to be floating around, brother, you know what I'm saying? Because you're going to release all those problems and all those issues and all that stuff that you've been dealing with, man. I don't care how, who you are. I don't care how long you've been work, walking with the Lord or maybe you just started. Man, we need this, guys. I, you know what? I need it. And you know what my high is? My, my high and what I love is when we come together just like this 
so that way we are able to deal with those issues.